All right, thanks for watching. And since it's that time of the year again, let's do a little limit speed run. So today I'll calculate 10 limits and you're allowed to use everything except rule number one, do not use L'Hopital's rule because uh, at this point I think you haven't learned it yet. All right, so let's get started. All right, first question, limit x goes to 2 of x squared minus x minus 2 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. So this is very classical. Just factor out the numerator and the denominator and see what happens. So that becomes limit x goes to 2. I believe x minus 2 times x plus 1. And the denominator becomes x minus 2 times x minus 1. So you can check it by uh, factoring out and then this cancels out and you're left with limit x goes to 2 of uh, x plus 1 over x minus 1 and then if you just plot now you can just plug in so it becomes 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 1 which is 3 over 1 which is 3. Wonderful. Again, if you usually have a ratio, factor out. Second question, limit x goes to 9 of x minus 9 over square root of x minus 3. I know you can factor out the numerator, but because you have a square root, it's usually better to multiply by the conjugate form. So let's multiply the square root of x minus 3 by square root of x plus 3 over square root of x plus 3 and see what happens. So here what we get is limit x goes to 9 of, let's see, x minus 9 times square root of x plus 3. And then this becomes square root of x squared minus 3 squared, which becomes limit x goes to 9 of uh, x minus 9 over x minus 9 but we still have the square root of x plus 3. This cancels out, and in the end, we get limit x goes to 9 of this, which is square root of 9 plus 3, which is 3 plus 3, which is 6. So again, if you see square roots, remember to multiply by the conjugate form. All right, next one. Next one, limit x goes to 0 of cosine of pi times absolute value of x over x. So first of all, do not ignore the absolute value. It is very important. And generally, if you see an absolute value, you have to do the left-hand side and the right-hand side limit. So first, let's do the limit as x goes to 0 plus of that. So x goes to 0 plus of this function pi absolute value of x over x. Now if x is positive, absolute value of x is just x. So this becomes limit x goes to uh, 0 plus of cosine of pi x over x. And this cancels out now and that becomes limit x goes to 0 plus of cosine of pi, which becomes minus 1. So that is the right-hand side limit. And now let's just do the left-hand side limit. So limit x goes to 0 minus of cosine of pi, absolute value of x over x. Now, and again, remember this limit was minus 1. Now if, absolute val if x is negative, absolute value of x is just minus x. So this becomes limit x goes to 0 minus of cosine of pi times minus x over x. And again, you cancel out the x here, and you're left with cosine of minus pi, which is minus 1. And so, you see, because you have the same limit on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, I guess switched, you can conclude that this limit is actually minus 1. So the answer is minus 1. However, if you get two different limits, you would say the limit doesn't exist. 
So very important with absolute values, left-hand side and right-hand side limit. Super, super important. All right, next one. So limit x goes to 1 of x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. So another tricky factoring problem because what we get, this is limit x goes to 1 of x cubed minus 1 cubed over x minus 1. And here you need the formula for difference of cubes, which is a cubed minus b cubed is a minus b times a squared plus AB plus B squared. So what this becomes, this is then limit x goes to 1 of, so A minus B, x minus 1 times A squared, so x squared, A times B, that is x, and then 1 squared, which is 1, over x minus 1, so again, this cancels out, and you get 1 plus 1 plus 1, which I hope is straight. And before I move on, what's important here is, if you do limit at a point, it's usually factoring. If you do limit as x goes to infinity, it's you factor out the highest power. So those are two different techniques. So always beware where you're at. All right, next problem. All right, limit x goes to 0 of x squared sine of 1 over x. Because you see sine, it's a squiggly thing, and it's usually the squeeze theorem. So usually, but not always, because you've seen, I think, example 3, where we had this absolute value, and we couldn't do that. So how does the squeeze theorem work? Start with sine of 1 over x. Again, sine of anything is between one minus 1 and 1, and then just multiply by x squared. So x squared sine of 1 over x is between x squared and minus x squared. Now, the bigger function goes to 0 as x goes to 0. The smaller function goes to 0 as x goes to 0. So by the squeeze theorem, and it's very important to say that the answer is zero. Okay. Great, already halfway done. How fun is that? Next one. All right, next one's slightly trickier. I asked this on a quiz. Wasn't well received. But so limit x goes to 0 plus of ln of x squared plus 1 over ln of x squared plus 3. Now, is x goes to 0 plus, ln goes to minus infinity. So if you square that, you get plus infinity. So this is really of the form infinity over infinity. So interestingly here, you have to use the techniques for limits at infinity which here is simply factor out the highest power. So uh, here, what you have to do is factor out this ln of x squared from top and bottom. So that is limit x goes to 0 plus of ln of x squared. And again, 1 plus 1 over ln of x squared divided by ln of x squared times 1 plus 3 over ln of x squared. Okay. Then you cancel this out. And then what you're left with is 1 plus 1 over infinity over 1 plus 3 over infinity. So 1 plus 1 over infinity over 1 plus 3 over infinity, which is just 1 plus 0 over 1 plus 0, and that's 1. And in fact, that makes sense. If this is huge, it's much bigger than this 1 over 3. So you're just left with this ratio of 1. Man, this is so much fun. I should make 100 limits. Maybe not. I'm not as cool as black pen, red pen. All right, the next one is one of my favorite ones. So limit x goes to 2 of square root of 6 minus x minus 2 over square root of 3 minus x minus 1. Since you have two square roots, you actually have to multiply this by two conjugate forms. So let's go one by one. 
let's start with the square root of 6 minus x minus 2. So you multiply this by square root of 6 minus x plus 2. So square root of 6 minus x plus 2. And the great thing is the numerator factors out. So this becomes limit as x goes to 2 of, again, square root of 6 minus x squared minus 2 squared over square root of 3 minus x minus 1 times square root of 6 minus x plus 2. And the numerator, again, it simplifies. All it becomes, it is 6 minus x minus 4, and that becomes a 2 minus x. So it's already good. So this is limit x goes to 2 of 2 minus x over, if you want, square root of 6 minus x plus 2 times square root of 3 minus x minus 1. If you check it, it's still of the form 0 over 0, but remember, there's still this square root, so let's multiply this by the conjugate form, so square root of 3 minus x plus 1 over square root of 3 minus x plus 1, and what's nice is it simplifies with this uh, denominator. And careful, do not multiply this by this minus that, because that would just give you the first answer, which is very bad. So, now you have limit x goes to 2 of 2 minus x times square root of 3 minus x plus 1 over square root of 6 minus x plus 2. And then again, this squared minus this squared, which becomes 3 minus x minus 1. And in fact, it becomes 2 minus x. So the denominator is just 2 minus x. And lo and behold, and that's typical in those problems, there is a cancellation. So this one cancels out, and then you're left with a very nice and easy limit to evaluate, namely the limit as x goes to 2 of square root of 3 minus x plus 1 over square root of 6 minus x plus 2, and that just becomes square root of 3 minus 2 plus 1 over square root of 6 minus 2 plus 2. And therefore, again, summa summarum, we get square root of 1, which is 1, so 1 plus 1, square root of 4, which is 2, 2 plus 2, so uh, I believe 2 over 4, which is 1 half. Great. So again, square roots, think conjugate form. All right, next problem. This one, which I found in the Berkeley problem, Berkeley exam, so the limit as x goes to 0 of this thing. So notice there is this common factor of 1 over x. So let's factor that out. So this is limit x goes to 0 of 1 over x times 1 over square root of 1 plus x minus 1. So here you have a fraction, let's put it under a common denominator. So that's limit x goes to 0, 1 over x, and then what was it? 1 minus square root of 1 plus x over square root of 1 plus x. Now here you see again 1 minus square root, so let's use a conjugate form, 1 plus square root of 1 plus x, 1 plus square root of 1 plus x. And then what's nice is the denominator, uh, sorry, the numerator simplifies. So limit x goes to 0 of 1 over x, and still 1 over square root of 1 plus x. And what this becomes, it's 1 squared minus square root squared. So 1 minus 1 plus x, and that simplifies to minus x. So in the end, you have limit x goes to 0, 1 over x square root of 1 plus x times minus x, 
This simplifies and we get minus 1 over square root of 1 plus 0. So in the end, we have the answer minus 1. Right? Two more left. We're almost done with this marathon. I'm a bit nervous because my phone has 10% battery. So let's see if we can finish. So let's do this one. It seems easy, but it's harder than you think. So let's do limit x goes to 2 of x squared minus x minus 6. Well, your first intuition would be to factor this out. So limit x goes to 2. And I believe that this simplifies to x minus 3 times x plus 2 over x minus 2, which doesn't really cancel out. So let's see what happens. Well, the numerator is 2 minus 3 times 2 plus 2. And that is, I think, minus 1 times 4, so minus 4. And this denominator is 0. So it becomes 4 over 0, which should indicate that mm, uh, we might have you know, a, a limit that doesn't exist. And in order to show this, let's again do the left-hand side and the right-hand side limit. So let's do limit x goes to 2 plus of this, of x minus 3 times x plus 2 over x minus 2. So again, the numerator as before, it is minus 4. But now the denominator is 2 plus minus 2, which is 0 plus. And minus 4 over a tiny number, that is minus infinity. So you can already say the limit doesn't exist. But let's figure out the other side. As Adele says, hello from the other side. So this is x minus 3 times x plus 2 over x minus 2. Again, so we have a minus 4, and this time it becomes 0 minus. In this case, negative over negative is positive, so we have plus infinity. So the limit generally does not exist. Okay. All right, one more, and then we're done. All right, so let's do the best one for last. Limit x goes to 0 of cotangent of 2x over x. And uh, that was a Berkeley problem, actually. But you'll see it's quite interesting. So you write this limit x goes to 0 of cosine of 2x over sine of 2x. And remember, this is before L'Hopital's rule. So that's what makes it tricky. So this becomes limit x goes to 0 of cosine of 2x over x sine of 2x. And well, let's see what this becomes. The numerator is cosine of 0, which is 1. But the denominator is x sine of 2x, which gives you 0. And in particular, because it's 1 over 0, you expect the case where it's infinity or where it doesn't exist. And this is why you have to do the left-hand side and the right-hand side limit. So let's calculate the limit as x goes to 0 plus. of cosine of 2x over x sine of 2x. Well, the numerator is 1. Doesn't matter if you put 1 plus or 1 minus. And now x goes to 0 plus. And the question is, what is sine of 0 plus? Well, if your angle is slightly bigger than 0, then the sine is also slightly bigger than 0. So we get 1 over 0 plus times 0 plus, which is 1 over 0 plus, which is infinity. And what if you do the limit as x goes to 0 minus of cosine of 2x over x sine of 2x? Again, the numerator is 1. The denominator becomes 0 minus. And then sine of 0 minus is small and negative. So 0 minus, and you get 1 over 0 plus, which is infinity. And because the two limits agree, we can say that this limit is infinity. So it doesn't exist, and it's infinity. 
And all right, I hope you like this. And if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.